Welcome to Art Walkthrough, where I guide you through my works to help you be a better player at the game of art. First, we're going to take a look at our inventory. I created a custom ink brush for this piece to mimic the style of Toru Nakayama. And everything else is just a bunch of round brushes. Let's get right into it. So for this project, I wanted to be able to interpret Samus Aran if Toru Nakayama had drawn her. So Toru Nakayama is the main artist behind the Mega Man Zero series, and I am a huge fan of his work, particularly and strictly Mega Man Zero art related. I have the art books in both English and Japanese. I have referenced them heavily for my own art style, and I consider him one of my art parents. Uh, I, I really enjoy his work. It's nostalgic and it's inspirational. So like the beginning of any good project, I'm going to research. I'm going to find the original character design coupled with the artwork that he did, Toru Nakayama did for Mega Man Zero, and kind of just synthesize all of this together to create a basic character sheet for Samus that I can use to then pose her later. And I also wanted to just create a character sheet for everyone to use in case they also want to draw her in this style. There's some staple designs that he has that I wanted to really bring over into Samus. And one is, are these, these really bulky shapes, but particularly Toru Nakayama really avoids sharp corners. So even when there is a corner, it's usually beveled. And that's a really interesting choice to do across an entire game. And so you can see on a lot of these, whether they're bosses or the main character, there's not a lot of corners. There's a lot of beveled edges and roundness. It's almost like a adult chibi. There, there's a cuteness to it and an intensity to it. And I, I just love the balance he strikes. And I particularly love all the shape choices that he makes. So I'm trying to pull that all together and create something that would make sense in the world of Metroid. And I think one of the key things that I love about his work are his faces. I love the way that he just tackles anime. I just love the way that he draws his eyes and the really extreme sort of caricature uh, of the face. It sounds weird, but there's there's a child likeness to all the characters. They have, like, like proportionally, their heads are bigger than the average adult, and yet they still look mature and like they belong in this world. And it's just a really cool stylistic choice, and it looked excellent on the Game Boy. You know, a lot of this is just figuring out, trying to get into his headspace, and the easiest way to do that is to just, you know, ingest what the artist made. And Honestly, just pulling shapes and designs he's already done and putting them straight on Samus and see like, oh, do, does it work on her armor? Does it work on her? And a lot of this process was, I think it was over the course of about five hours for this sheet, maybe four. And so it's very iterative and I, I'm just trying to figure out what works best. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything particular or perfect. I basically just made this character sheet for myself to reference. I probably spent a little bit too much time coloring all of this. This is not my best coloring work. It's not something I'm particularly proud of, but it did the job. Kind of the second phase of this idea was, what if he also drew her in a pose? Not just what if he designed her, but what would a pose for Samus in the Nakayama style look like? And so I'm thinking, okay, well, it needs to be perspective heavy and it needs to be dynamic. And what, what would Samus be doing if she was drawn by him? And obviously I think her gun is a huge part of her character. And since I spent so much time designing the gun and designing her character and all her armor, I really wanted to emphasize the design that I made and show it off in the best light possible. So putting her in a dynamic pose where I can show off all those choices that I made inspired by Nakayama would be ideal. So I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna be her gun pose. She's about to fire off something and I just need to make it look really dynamic and very anime. You know, you know, something that's, that anime does very well, especially while it's in motion is just dynamism. Anime is so good at exaggerating the right things that I wanted to make sure I captured that in a pose because I think that's just what Nakayama does. He's so good at capturing dynamism in a single pose. And so I'm having a really hard time nailing this perspective. Like when I look at it, I'm like, this just is not being pushed the way that I want it to. So I sent it to some art friends for feedback. Um, I ended up taking it into Blender and creating a very quick maquette just to mess around with and see if I couldn't get a camera angle that worked better. And it's just really basic block in stuff. This is not complex. I'm thinking maybe if her feet are rotated, it'll look cooler. Like I'm really trying to twist and turn her torso, really trying to push this pose as much as I can. Or, you know, her face, I'm making her face a little bit more tilted. I'm, I'm tilting her hips, I'm tilting her torso. I want everything to look like it's being pushed to its limit. 
And so after I do my 3D pose, I'm going back in and then there's a big jump. There's a big jump. So unfortunately I did a lot of the actual posing and drawing off screen and it wasn't recorded, but I am very, very happy with the pose I ended up coming up with. You know, this was just, again, just iteration after iteration. I just draw, 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 and I just keep drawing on top of it until it looks right, until I'm satisfied and I look at it and I think, I am proud of this piece. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna create a quick brush to kind of emulate the line art that he has, and um, you can get that for free, link in the description. I called it a micron, but really it's just imitating that, that line pen that he used in his work. And I work on a vector layer, so that way these straight lines and hard lines can be dealt with a lot easier later. Line art, to me, is a very peaceful zen process. I don't rush through it, I kind of just enjoy it. I'm now going to take a different digital brush. This is from the Daub brush pack. And I'm going to go over some of my lines and go into some of the corners to create what looks like pools of ink, almost as if this was done on paper traditionally. Now I'm adding a slight color to the line art. I wanted it to look like it was almost scanned in and it kind of had this burn look to it, reddish. And I did that just using a gradient map. Now I'm going in and again, I'm going to do local color pass and then I'll eventually start adding layers to shade it. And I want to emulate this, the style that he used for the Mega Man Zero art as if this was done officially by him. That's the one thing that I really like doing when I, when I choose to make fan art is doing it in the style that it was originally in. I don't typically make fan art quote in, in my style. I usually do it in the style that I like from that work. So it doesn't make any sense to make a Toru Nakayama inspired Samus piece and then paint it and render it in my own personal style. It makes way more sense to honor the artist and do it in their style as best as I can. So you can see in the right hand side, I have a silhouette base. I add a flat layer on top of it for just all my colors, all, you know, I put all my colors on a single layer. Then on top of that, I add a multiply layer and I think I'm using like a purpley color and then I just keep adding stuff, you know. I'll add another multiply layer if I think the colors need to be darker. Then I'm adding overlay layers for, you know, various lighting effects. The most important thing to keep in mind is always just your light source. And so I could have made this way more dynamic, but again, I wanted to keep that Mega Man Zero look to it. So she's kind of brighter than I would want her to be. Originally, I just wanted the cannon to be the light source, but I think it looks better this way, kind of more as like actual game art. And uh, yeah, a lot of this is just finishing up post-processing. Again, I'm just using a lot of layers, adding stuff on top, glow dodge. Again, my philosophy when I create art is like, I do whatever it takes to make it look exactly the way I want. Um, and a really cool thing I chose to do that I'm very happy with is filling in the left side of the gun almost completely to make it look like that light is just really glaring and it's just like taking over that whole end of the cannon. And I was also very happy with the, the cannon light uh, or the cannon burst. And now I'm just taking it into Affinity Photo to really kind of damage the photo to make it look like it was scanned and it's kind of lower res than it was. And I really enjoy this process. I really like emulating traditional looks in digital spaces. I'm down resing the photo, I'm adding grain, I'm adding, you know, color variation. And yeah, overall, I'm very happy with this piece. Here's the final. If you want access to the Clip Studio paint file, along with the brushes, follow the Gumroad link in the description. It's totally free. Tips are definitely welcome. What would you like to hear in future videos in my art walkthroughs? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you learned anything new. If you like the content, be sure to like it, share it with someone, subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more of these videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.